The World Health Organization has added gaming disorder to its list of diseases. Is this just old men yelling at clouds, or is this a moment where we all need to stop and think about what gaming is doing to our lives? Uh, find out all this and more on this disease-ridden bowl of dude soup. Hello, fellow addicts, and welcome to this bowl of dude soup. World Health Organization's fucking dogging on us, mm -hmm. but we'll put them in their place in a minute. Uh, this podcast is brought to you by three sponsors and four wonderful people. I'm actually including myself in that. We'll get to the people first because this podcast is all about people. Uh, addict number one, and that's not that's not sequential. That's ranking. Addict number one, James Willems. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, book addict number one, Elise Willems. Addicted to reading. And addicted to love, number one, Adam Kovic. Can't stop touching myself. Might mm. as well face it. <laughs> this podcast is brought to you by three sponsors, Ship Station, Black Tux, and Mint Mobile. Uh, you can get uh, an additional month of Ship Station for free in addition to your normal free sign-up. If you use our promo code DUDE when signing up, uh, you can get $20 off your purchase at theblacktux.com slash soup. And you can cut your wireless bill to $15 a month at mintmobile.com slash DUDE. Uh, you'll hear more about all those services and offers later. But first... Guys, we are in the throes of addiction. Horrible, horrible disease, uh, which also entitles us to unemployment, uh, free health care, what have you. Um, let me just run through the, uh, I guess, the top real quick here. So gaming disorder has been added to the latest version of the International Classification of Diseases. It sounds more dire than it is, uh, and it doesn't even actually all sound all that dire, but it, it does offer us a powerful headline. Uh, so this is the 11th revision of this classification document, which basically lists all diseases as classified by the World Health Organization. Um, this hasn't been published yet. Uh, so it's being added and revised and will eventually go through the, like, the publishing process. But the last one, the 10th revision of all, all diseases, was published in 1992. So it was a while ago. Uh, the current doc is just being revised and added to keep up with today's hustle and bustle. Uh, this is a bit of reading, and I'm, I'm sorry to like to shove a brick of text at you guys right off the top, but I think it is important given the discussion that's about to happen. So uh, this is the text of the classification of this particular disease. Gaming, disor gaming disorder is characterized by a pattern of persistent or recurrent gaming behavior. Uh, and this is cute. It says digital gaming or video gaming, and it's even hyphenated. Hold on. It's just really cute, so I like to look at it that way. Uh, video gaming with a hyphen. Anyway, uh, which may be online, i.e. over the internet, or, hold on, I gotta resize my windows. Um, or offline manifested by one, impaired control over gaming, two, increasing priority given to gaming to the extent that gaming takes precedence over other life interests and daily activities, and three, continuation or escalation of gaming despite the occurrence of negative consequences. The behavior pattern is of sufficient severity to result in significant impairment in personal, family, social, educational, occupational, or other important areas of functioning. The pattern of gaming behavior may be continuous or episodic and recurrent. The gaming behavior and other features are normally evident over a period of at least 12 months. In order for a diagnosis to be assigned, although required duration may be shortened if all diagnostic requirements are met and symptoms are severe. So that was a lot of text. Essentially it's saying you have gaming disorder if, uh, yeah, and, and irony of ironies, we're watching Games Done Quick right now, which probably features a lot of people that maybe meet some of these criteria. I was gonna say, is a symptom of ga having gaming disorder being that you're very upset that someone scheduled a podcast recording during the sonic block of uh, <laughs> Summer Games Done Quick? Is that on the list for World Health Organization? <laughs> it would, okay. provided that that anger impairs your personal, social, or occupational functions. Well, I shan't be talking because I am so, <laughs> so upset. So fuming. Which will affect my job. I think that's allowable. Good. I think that that fits. Good. I just I want to clarify one thing on this. Mm -hmm. Are they saying that gaming itself is addicting or that there is such thing as a gaming addiction disorder? Yeah, uh, that's a great question because it does hit on a very specific distinction that a lot of people don't make. This doesn't say that gaming is addictive. It just says if you exhibit these behaviors, you have gaming okay. disorder. Gotcha. Which, and this is a point we'll get to later, is true of pretty much anything. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This description is so vague, like you could have fishing disorder and just control, at, control H, like find or replace gaming with fishing. Mm -hmm. Still accurate, that doesn't make it a disease. 
Well, I mean, I guess addiction, addiction is the disease. Is the disease. Mm-hmm. They're just making sure, because I, I could understand a situation. It's the same as when, uh, what's his face, came out and was like, I'm, I'm a sex addict. Oh, David DiCaprio. And you're like, yeah. you're like, yeah, we all like it. He's like, no, I'm an addict of sex. And everyone's like, what are you talking about? Hmm. But I think it's because the discussion is of addiction and how that changes your your brain and how you see the world and how that's so when you get to that point well it's past to the point of it being healthy yeah is, so is the question mm, but I, I, still, I think any particular activity or platform can become addictive mm-hmm. but the question is does that inspire addiction does it is it the formula that it would m- maybe make you more inclined to become addicted to it um i you know is, is there something about gambling that that draws people to become more fixated on it. I don't know. I've not ever had a gambling oh, problem. Me. I, I mean, <laughs> we've talked about it. We've talked it before and on like our loot crate ones yeah. that there are things about that that trigger they trigger a reward centers in yes, your brain. Absolutely. So it's basically like training a dog, which, which we were gaming about definitely before. does in terms of leveling up, acquire mm-hmm. like yeah. absolutely this there's crossover you get with that this. Hit of dopamine. And gambling is a feature of gaming. But I, I think it's I, this to me seems more like a broadcast of listen when someone comes comes in and says I think I'm addicted to video games or someone says to someone else you might be addicted to video games there's a little now there's credence to it yeah right like now it's like well it's on this list so yeah. I'm not I'm not insane I'm not a crazy person likes how someone may have looked at someone who said I'm addicted to um, porn or I'm addicted to sex or like any of these other things right. that everyone kind of likes but aren't necessarily addicted to. I guess it's similar in the way that things have like an empty reward system. So uh, social media and video games are very similar where you can put out something and you, Elise and I can make a, a tweet or an Instagram post at the same time and be like, we just get like 30,000 likes. We're huge. Whoa, and then, wow. And you're like, I did it. I got these likes. And it's like, but it results in nothing. The gaming, you can beat a game, you can beat a level, but it, you get that hit. It's actually... You, well, hold on, you, you get, get those that. achievements now. Do you? Yeah. I, I guess, really, really, you. Social media just makes me sad across the board, I think. I, because I generally find that strangers yeah. like my things more opposed to the people that I actually know in real life. And that makes me... That's oh. another level of making me feel sad. What if I told you this? Everyone in my life is a stranger. That's you deep. have like face blindness? Or friend okay? to all is a friend to none. Yes, yeah. cool. I do, Elise, have face blindness. <laughs> James, James has cool dude disorder. Which yeah, is also yeah that's what I call no, it. No, Adam and I are very popular. That's, it can become a problem. I, I see. I don't well, I mean, I think these analogies are appropriate, though, because uh, if you can get it, you can, I guess by this definition, you could get addicted to social media in the same way you get addicted to video games. Most people are. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So where do you draw the line? And actually, a lot of... So this classification... Um, I think, James, you brought up the point that if, if the World Health Organization classifies it as a disease, that changes a lot. Mm-hmm. That means you can like go to clinics and get help for this sort of thing. Um, that means that uh, it also feeds into some moral panic, which like with Fortnite blowing up and making like headlines and, and a lot of adults reading headlines, I say that even uh, pretending that I'm not an adult in this conversation, but um, if a bunch of people who don't play games are not not familiar with the form, read all these headlines about how teens are spending 80 hours a week playing Fortnite, and then they see that sitting next to the World Health Organization has classified this as a disorder. It can that's not a great combination to have, especially in like lawmakers' minds and people that don't follow internet culture and don't understand anything about it. So uh, to that note, a lot of professionals have come out and said, "All right, there may be something there, but it's way too early, and there's not enough science for you to actually call this a disease yet." Um, hmm. This is via CNN, Dr. Vladimir Pozniak. Can't trust him. Pozniak, yeah. Sorry that I massacred your name. Can't You're a doctor. Him. You can't yeah. pronounce their name, you can't trust my voice. He's never going to watch again. <laughs> He's a member of the World Health Organization Dep- Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse. Says, quote, millions of gamers around the world, even when it comes to the intense gaming, would never cl- qualify as people suffering from gaming disorder. Uh, and let me emphasize that this is a clinical condition and a clinical diagnosis can be made only by health professionals, which are properly pr- trained to do that. Goes on to say that the overall prevalence of this condition is very low. So those creating the classification are trying to say or spread the knowledge that this is not somebody who just plays a lot of video games. Mm-hmm. This is, again, somebody who does it to the detriment of showering or going to work or feeding themselves. Yeah. Which does happen. But again, sure. I think that's kind of like a definition of addiction. Again, he's just they're just redefining what mm-hmm. addiction is. Same rules apply to all of the other things. Yeah. Like, c- considering the number of people that partake in alcohol, yeah. right? Like, which plenty is, of people do it. Which is chemically 
addicting as opposed that's to that's maybe a little bit emotionally to, addicting maybe well, a little bit easier to test because you can yeah. go well, your cells are fucked or like heroin <laughs> well, and stuff like you can't stop this right now because it's changed your biology but yeah. i think like i mean i, I don't know that he's nece- necessarily diminishing it but i think it's still a discussion of saying you can go somewhere now or, and you can say, I think this person may be addicted to video games, or I think I might be addicted to video games. Mm-hmm. And then someone can now look at you with a straight face because it's on this list. Yeah. Yeah, I think also, like, to me, 20 hours, like you said, it's, it's whether a doctor um, diagnoses that, it's on a person to person basic basis, but giving a benchmark or a threshold like 20 hours. That might at least give you a, a point where you evaluate your time, where you say, okay, I spend more than 20 hours doing this particular thing. Is this healthy? Is this natural? Do I still have a well-rounded life? Um, I think you can say that with lots of things. Like uh, James goes to the gym, you know, Too 30 much. hours a week. And he can at least look at that 30 hours and say, okay, I can evaluate here. Is this too much time? And it's not, it's never going to be. It's never going to be enough. And that's what he tells you. 24 <laughs> hours in a day. He's clearly ripping your marriage 24 apart. hours in a day. What's 90 minutes out of the day? Yeah. It's nothing. It's a fraction of nothing. Um, but I think like at least <laughs> having those those benchmarks to look at and say like, yeah, bench- anything beyond this point. I mean, my benchmarks are way, way high because they spent so much time in the gym. <laughs> <laughs> this is getting sad. I mean, just like being able to look better. beyond it's that like- point and say like, is this still healthy? Yeah, maybe after 20 hours it's <sighs> healthy shape my for life. you. James will be there benching. I'll be there with like my laptop. And like just heat and fans pouring out of it with a headset on, doing virtual benching. Ooh. Uh. Who's who's more healthy? Huh? I defy you science to find out. <laughs> Can't be proven. Come at me, Vladimir. Uh, <laughs> there's, uh, I got to say that that even in the media cycle, I've been pretty heartened by the response to this because mo- it's most people going like, why? Yeah. Um, this is in the same CNN article. Anthony Bean, a licensed psych... His last name is Bean. He's Dr. Bean. Anyway. Anthony Bean, a licensed psychologist and executive director at the Telos Project, a nonprofit mental health clinic in Fort Worth, Texas, counts himself as a member of the camp that opposes inclusion of the gaming disorder into the ICD, which is the classification of diseases. Uh, quote, it's a little premature to label this as a diagnosis, Bean said. I'm a clinician and a uh, researcher, so I see people who play video games and believe themselves to be on the lines of addicted. Uh, This is pretty interesting. In his experience, they're actually using gaming, quote, more as a coping mechanism for either anxiety or depression. Uh, Forthcoming research shows that gaming is a secondary diagnosis in coping with a primary diagnosis of anxiety and depression. Being said, quote, when anxiety and depression is dealt with, the gaming goes down significantly. Um, So there is kind of a concern, if I read between the lines here, that adding that as a diagnosis into itself may prevent people from actually digging deeper or prevent doctors from digging deeper and finding maybe causes that that is to which that is symptomatic similar to honestly a lot of people brought up when we had him sponsoring our podcast said erectile dysfunction can be symptomatic of other issues and an enabling people to find that medication on their own might have them circumvent finding an actual cure as opposed to just medicating the simple what would be how would you medicate gaming addiction uh, it still seems like this yeah. is a debate between emotional addiction, mm. which is very real, and physical addiction, mm-hmm. right? When you're physically addicted to something, it's because the chemicals that, that are part of whatever it is have changed how your body operates, and now you rely on it mm-hmm. to function. So if you're gonna have to, if you're gonna quit that, you not only have to break the emotional connection, but you also have to break the physical conne- connection that the substance has with your body. But then there's other things, unquantifiable things, like gambling and sex and gaming that are an emotionally driven thing. That I feel like you could still copy and paste everything he said about gaming addiction and apply it to other things. I mean, I guess they do still trigger a physical response. Well, in like in terms of brain chemistry, yeah, yeah, but not in terms of like heroin. No, you're not you know. ingesting a subject, a substance to get that result. Yeah, I, I mean, it seems so strange I, that there would be resistance I, I, to I, this. See, I would think it would be more of there. This is a okay if you if you identify that this person is is gaming an unhealthy amount, you would say you would maybe get to those other diagnoses to the to the depression. Or the anxiety, because you might. That, to me, that's the starting point of well, maybe why? Like, yeah. if you're if a th- person's consulting with their therapist as to why they game so much, well, why is that? Do you feel isolated? Are you looking for escapism? Like, I think I feel like that you would just get to in, in talking to any therapist. If you've ever been to a therapist, you'd realize that like there are those links that you 
get to those points. So I, I feel like you would get there, but yeah. I mean, I'm no doctor. Well, I, no I doctor. guess yeah, we're, I, none of us are doctors, um, in case you weren't aware. Yet. We're all doctors. Um, <laughs> but, like, yeah, exactly like Elise is saying, it seems weird that you would be like, whoa, 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 put the brakes on this, because we just, don't want them... We don't want just them... Game. It's just a just gaming problem. Hand, just doing this, and then not oh. solving the problem, when as much as I'm familiar, and someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but, again, if you're addicted to sex, generally the prescription is therapy, not... Not like a pill that you take that keeps Sex you from therapy. getting boners, right? Like I think you generally go and speak with a therapist yeah. or a psychologist or someone that inherent to their job description is to get to the root of those issues. Sure. And then you're like, oh, I'm addicted to sex. Why is that? Oh, my mom and stepdad banged every single night against my adjoining wall when I was a kid and, and fucked me up or something. Like, and then you get to it, right? Right. And then that's what helps remedy your your the symptom. The it, uh, I'm using this word loosely, but the attack on video games through the years is always a strange one. And I understand if someone's attacking something they don't understand, and that happens when if you're Nancy Reagan and you see Mortal Kombat, you're like, "What have video games become?" Yeah. And that is your view. That is your one single view. Totally understand. It's like someone looking at films and all they saw was a porno and they're like, this is what all films are? I can't believe it. And it's like, well, no, it, it's 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 frustrating when people are trying to form an opinion around something and they're not very educated on the subject matter. Though it sounds like these people are educated on it. It just, it always seems like this is such a weird thing to go after. The video game industry is already self-regulated. It already has all these things in place. I honestly, it, it's similar to how everyone gets crazy about like, well, video games are causing violence. That's what's causing death when really it's more about obesity and heart disease and all these other things that are much more, uh, it's just out there but no one wants to talk about it. You know, because they're like, well, Coke gave the government a lot of money, so keep drinking Coke. It also implies it, judgment. Like no one wants to judge anyone. If you're living, like games are, yeah, that's a really good good point. Like heart disease caused by sedentary lifestyles of which gaming is can be a large contributor. But also, if you're a responsible adult, you can game a lot and then get up and do something and make sure your body's being maintained as well as your your mind being entertained. Sure, it, personal responsibility. It, it just yeah. seems like, I mean, it seems like if someone is prone to anxiety or depression, right? Mm -hmm. And then they game, they get addicted to video games because of these actual things affecting them, right? Why would you... It just seems weird that you would just be like, we, should, we shouldn't qualify that as something. It's not worth qualifying that as something because I find it highly unlikely that if this same person like, didn't have games, they'd miraculously be cured of their anxiety and depression. It would just be replaced with some other thing, mm -hmm. right? Some so, other escapism. Some other thing outlet. that is probably on the list, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you never know. Like, I, I guess it's just acknowledging that it could be on the list I, is, is yeah. as much as is as maybe as uh, as as much as it needs to be escalated is like well yes this could be something we get we, we science acknowledge that this could be it, one of the arguments um, one of the arguments against it uh, dr. Bean or mr. Bean it doesn't actually refer to him as a doctor but um, so this is this is an interesting art argument is a weird word but he says, quote, uh, even most clinicians uh, would probably agree that they don't understand the concept for video games because they're not immersed in that world or experience, uh, but goes on to say, it's, n it's not really a good idea to go forward with this diagnosis. It really opens the door for anything to be a sickness. Sure, yeah. So I, th I think you're right. I li like, it's... You you said like this is an attack on games, and a lot of people have interpreted it as that. Right. Cause, you know, I, I know it's, I know it's not. It. If yeah. anything, it's just saying, Perhaps video games have matured to a point where we're now it's now being classified along with everything else. And mm. it's just there for classification. It's not saying, it's not putting an opinion on it or a spin on it. It's just saying this thing has been recognized as something that could be classified as addicting. Um, there, it's been archived. Let's move on. The most the, apt, com oh, sorry. Oh, uh, just, just to James's question, to summarize, I think the pro of doing it is that for parents who don't understand it, it might, make them more like snap into it and be like, oh, my child might have a problem. I should go and have them talk, talk to about it. And if it's officially classified as a disease, you might get to do that under insurance. Uh, whereas it might be a harder case to say that they have certain mental disorders just because they're playing World of Warcraft a lot. Negatives are that it might lead to abuse. Like 
a, a lazy 19-year-old could just be like, oh, I'm addicted to gaming, so what are you going to do? I can't get a job. And then, uh, then they like spend six months in ther therapy, not really taking it seriously because they just don't want to do much. Uh, and then also, yeah, it does sort of water down disease or mental disorder to a degree when you classify it loosely by just the broadest of, of mental malfunctioning. I don't know. It seems like, it seems like how uh, Eskimos have a thousand words for snow. <laughs> like human beings should have a thousand terms for mental illness. <laughs> Kind of, qualifications yeah. for it, like we might as well, yeah. because it's kind of prevalent in in our makeup. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It seems like yes, you could anything could qualify. I guess if you're worried about people being misdiagnosed, then that's a medical practice thing, which is a bigger issue because that could happen with anything. The, the other right? like platform that comes to mind for me is television, and not in the exact same way because I think. Gaming offers you a reward system that obviously watching TV doesn't. In the fact that you level up in gaming, you collect things. There is something. There is a system to it that much more triggers something in your brain to say that you are uh, to give you those incentives in a reward system. Whereas television is more of just an, a passive action that you can become, uh, you know, addicted to. I think I, I I'm sure that. Um, 60 years ago when television was starting to actually like make its way into households and there, there was probably the, the same reaction of children are, this is poisoning their brains, they're watching television. I mean, it's documented that, you know, not as much as today, I think, because of social media and because we're more cognizant of, of media in this way, of, of the impact it can have on your, on your brain and your psyche. But this... I'm sure, I, I can't remember what the study was, but I feel like a few years ago I read that like the average person watches five hours of television a day or something like stupid like Jeez. that. Like it was a number where I'm like, how do people even have time to go home and have that many hours after work to watch that much TV? Mm -hmm. But there that, might, I that's, think- That's gonna go so far down within the next 20 to 30 years because every child growing up right now does not watch television. Well, that's why I'm thinking so that's, that's I'm a, like... That's a very kind of broad statement, but, you know... I, no, but kids are watching Anything YouTube. with a glowing rectangle, Yeah, basically. every every parent I talk to, and like I said, it's very Their small... Their kid watches YouTube. Yeah, yeah. they only watch YouTube. They watch they watch their entertainment on YouTube. Like, I I didn't think it was going to happen this fast, but t this fast, but TV's going to die a death yeah. sooner than I thought it would. It's only because one, once all the old people are dead, no one's gonna know how to even watch NBC. No one's gonna watch the nightly news. Like, it's all gonna go away. But it's it's kind of weird. In terms of like somebody sinking time into just sitting in front of a screen, yeah. you know, maybe it's like, maybe somebody plays 20 hours worth of video games a week, but they don't watch television at all. Maybe that's their entertainment. And sure. some people do go home, I think, and watch, like, some, I'm guilty of it too, some nights where like I go home and I'll watch like a movie and then I watch like two television shows and that's, you know. But are you also on your phone? Three and a half hours. Of course I am. Of course I am. I don't, I don't think people are um, just sitting there. The delight, the buffet. Uh, no, I mean, generally, it depends on what I'm watching. Well, but, you got your uh, tablet over here, you got your phone yeah. here. It, it you depends your 3D on what, what I'm watching. On. Look, the official set vinyl Whoa. soundtrack for Sonic but Adventure. I, and Sonic I will Adventure. say that I think both that, on one album. that can be a replacement and those yeah. those are sort of that way. I, I've known two women um, back home who their lives sort of fell apart due to gaming addiction. They were both in, did not know each other, but both were at different times in their lives addicted to World of Warcraft. And one of them, like, her schooling completely suffered. Her relationship ended because of it. Um, but, I mean, it was, it was a lot more than just, uh, I love this game and I'm addicted to it. She was, like, uh, you know, overweight at the time and was not happy with what she was doing in school, was not happy with other parts of her life. And now doesn't play World of Warcraft, got into great shape, like... It's, I, I guess know. here's a weird question though. Had World of Warcraft not existed, or say she was born, what would that vice years, have yeah, been? What would that have been, and would it have been something that was as easily would have been something that she could have quit easier, oh. or would it have been something that's harder? Maybe it would have been addicted, yeah. being addicted, addicted to shopping. You know, right. getting that reward. Or like by... Jazzer size. Yeah. <laughs> what else was cool in the eighties? Uh, yeah, very, very similar more. experiences. Uh, two women for me, actually, one of which is my ex. Um, both of which, in similarly like bad relationships, bad personal lives, uh, bad professional lives, retreated to uh, MMOs specifically, World of Warcraft for one, Final Fantasy XI for the other. 
but each one, yeah, retreated into that world where you have agency, you have success, you have clear goals and you can attain them. Um, yeah, and it, it, to, it is kind of a red flag uh, to see that. I mean, at the time, especially with my ex, I was like, awesome. I, I, like a girlfriend is really good at MMOs. And then after a while, it's going to be like, no, something else is going on here. Like she's not spending, she's not in the real world anymore. And it uh, mm -hmm. wasn't really a problem like, I could have seen from my like perspective. That's like with Yarny. Yeah, too much Yarny all day, bad, every day. Bad news. I intentionally, I don't play games that are very uh, like repetitive. Um, and if that makes any sense, because I know that like, like I would never play Marvel Puzzle Quest because I would just sink into that and it would become an obligation for me. And I would then be pl hate playing it. I would hate play this game every day because I felt like I needed to. And I know that about myself, so I don't typically do, like if I play like a mobile game, it's a game uh, like, Very good at inducing like, obligation. Like your daily login bonus, your friends need you, yeah. you're part of this event, and if you don't pull your weight, everyone's gonna be mad at you. But yeah, I, I I'll would play say, something like Monument Valley, where like I know it's gonna like begin and end. I guess to counter that sort of, not argument, but so much, but I tend to skip out on games, or I don't play games to completion anymore, that I can see the patterns coming up. So yeah. I have just realized my time has become more valuable. Like I stopped wa watching Westworld this season, because I saw where it was going, and everyone was saying it wasn't good. I'm like, I only have so many hours in the day, and I can only give it to certain types of entertainment. I don't want to give it to something that's bad. Sure. And so, like, as much as I enjoyed the game, Far Cry Five, mm -hmm. I haven't been playing through it anymore because I'm like, I'm just doing the same. Yeah, you're folding laundry I'm, at some point. But I, and I get it too. I finished God of War. I really enjoyed it, but that wasn't. It kept. It was enough there to push me forward, mm -hmm. and it was short enough that I want to go through Far Cry. I'm like, this just feels like a lot of grinding. Same thing with Horizon Zero Dawn. A lot of. I just. I, I saw what it was, where it was, and I was like, it's. There's not enough here. For me to continue. As soon as I hit that mini map, like because that first two hours of Horizon Zero Dawn is, is awesome, but very linear, mm -hmm. very very narrative heavy. And then you get to that first like camp, and it's like okay, open world time. Mm -hmm. And once I saw the mini map full of icons, it's like oh. Well, it was you can't go here because these robo dinosaurs yeah. have more or a higher level than you are right now. So you need to progress there. And I was like, I just I, I you look pretty and you look cool, and I I'm just gonna I'm, I wish you the you've best. Already, you've already played that game like five times. Yeah. I mean. So, I gave it my 60 bucks, and I kind of wish I didn't pay full price for it, but hey, here I am. Uh, Learned my lesson. A few points real quick. First of all, James, uh, chat says you're looking huge, so congratulations. 30 hours in the gym, it's baby. It's a haircut. It's a haircut. 30 too. hours in the gym. Also, Lee says when I get my hair cut short, I look bigger. Make sure I think she's smaller. right. Yeah, that's what I say. She looks like an anime that's character. Yeah, yeah, check out Fist of the North Star, man. They got tiny heads. Fucking huge bodies. That's like, that's like anime 101, right? Yeah. Small head, big body. I have a very small head, like a child yeah, size head. Yeah, you're yeah. looking yeah. huge. And you're looking yeah. huge. Big. Big, small head. And then Parcel Moose has an interesting comment uh, in the live chat here. It says, I have anxiety and I have an addiction to wearing headphones. What is the point of categorizing the headphone usage as an illness? The issue is anxiety. I mean, yeah, I, 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 the inherent, to me, the inherent question, and maybe this is our misunderstanding, is the purpose of the list. Yes. Because it is the purpose of the list so that way you can get, so that way you can get insurance. But Maybe like Warren said, you can actually go see a therapist. I think and it is. It I think it is an insurance thing. I think it is a an awareness thing. I, I think there are certain hard and soft intents. And yeah, I think, I think being able to file for certain uh, medical services and have them be covered under insurance and stuff like that, mm -hmm. it is it is useful for that. I think. Um, and then yeah, I think just generally like, if you say I have this condition and someone's like that ain't shit, and you're like, well no, it's like right. classified on the world stage to be a disorder, and I have. Yeah, it. Yeah, if you're. The boss says like you're fired, and then you go, "No, I'm a yeah, gaming addict." You can sue if it's like classified <laughs> yeah. as a disease. You can sue under those auspices, and the court will decide what it decides. But when there's no precedent, that's what opens the door for that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Let me let me do some. It, it would suck like to be here. rejected from a therapy session if you said, "Hey, doctor, I'm addicted to gaming." And they go, "Well, that's not covered on the insurance, yeah, so we can't talk up. about it." Um, because like we're, I think we're all kind of on the same page here. We're saying that addiction will be replaced with something. And right now it is this thing, which is gaming. And if you classify it under that, ultimately if the goal is to make someone healthier and get them away from these sort of, these uh, addictive personality tropes and these sort of, these uh, these things that make your life worse, then I think that's a good thing. Um, my, my whole thing, but we touched on a little bit, Lawrence, is like, I just don't want to demonize gaming and I don't like people who demonize gaming. This yeah. always happens. It's happened recently with school shootings. They're like, it's the video is to blame. They're playing Fortnite. It's like, motherfucker, no one's, no, it's not. Stop it. Well, it's a waste of time. Did the shooter do this while he was like? Yeah, probably. But it, it, regardless, scene. that's just part of popular culture. Teaches you culture. how to reload. You hit the I button, don't... you slide it out. You toss the magazine in the air. You yeah. pop one cap off. You slam it in. And then you open the chamber. You catch the bullet. You slide it in. And then you shoot sideways. You hit square. Oh yes. 
I don't know how our insurance works with therapy in terms of like therapists that are that you can go to that our insurance provides for. Mm -hmm. um, because I don't feel like a therapist, like if your insurance covers therapy and you go to one of the indicated therapists that they say like, these are the ones that you can go to, I don't think they can say like, this they disorder can't. is not, like, like, I think they would just give you in a, like a general like social adjustment disorder because they would identify that like all these other things are suffering. I don't know, um, but it, that seems kind of weird. Too. We should go to therapy more. I should. No, we all like should. As a group we? together? We should. Yeah. We could a probably stand therapy session. Group therapy. The therapist I Every day wish I could therapy. go to is not covered by our insurance. Yeah, that's great. It's very it? expensive. Welcome to America. Uh, so this is via oh, you Wikipedia. Want, you, want, good, you want good therapy? <laughs> I'll give you some therapy right now. You want to pay a pocket for me? <laughs> <laughs> Hell no. I got a van yeah. and an empty wallet. Let's make it happen. I gotta hit that deductible. <laughs> so this is, this is via Wikipedia. Um, the International Classification of Diseases is originally designed as a healthcare classification system providing a system of diagnostic codes for classifying diseases, including nuanced classifications for a wide variety of signs, symptoms, abnormal findings, complaints, social circumstances. Blah, blah, blah. system is designed to map health conditions to corresponding generic categories together with specific variations. Uh, da, 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 thus major categories. Uh, so it seems like it's just for classification. But it seems like adding adding something to it legitimizes it in the way that like now the medical society has to deal with it. Uh, so yeah, that's that's the idea. And the, the big thing about the one coming up, so like I said, revision 10 was in 92. The next one is supposed to add all of the conditions that are sprouting up based on our digital lifestyle, social media, mm -hmm. uh, all that stuff. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. Oh, it's, this is throwing way back at least, but one of the things you brought up about how TV kind of had an impact on a generation. This is an anecdote. I remember my dad telling me about how when he was in the Navy, but way back then he was listening to some old people chatting about it. He was like talking to a recruitment officer who had, who had been recruiting for the Navy since like the 40s. And uh, I don't remember exactly what the context was, but he's, this, this recruiting officer said the main difference between the pre-TV and post-TV generation is that post-TV kids expected every problem to be solved in about 22 minutes. So they'd hit a problem and they just expected through the natural flow of things for everything to work out. Hmm. I feel like video games, what I've seen is that people think they can acquire skills a lot faster than they actually are able to. So you go to a game, you learn how to play it in roughly 30 minutes and then you can start to express some level of mastery already. Whereas in real life, you do something for a month solid, like dance or any kind of physical activity, or any even mental activity, and you're just not great at it right away, whether it's video editing, or streaming, being on camera. A lot of those things seem much more approachable, and I think video games have this tendency of convincing you that you can learn things a lot faster than you probably can. Um, or having tolerance for failure. That's another thing. Games yeah. are largely very good at making you feel like you're doing well a lot of the time, whereas in real life, you just suck dick at everything you do the first couple hundred times you do it. Even sucking dick. Yeah, you're not, no one's good at that. I've wondered if, uh, because everyone likes to think before they do something the first time they're going to be really good at it. Mm -hmm. um, if I were to suck a dick, would I excel just by having one? You have to be like Tyler Coe and suck your own dick to really know. But then the angle's all off, right? I don't know. Does that, know. Li does that count as libel? <laughs> <laughs> he did that, right? <laughs> I'm not. I'm know. not imagining. I have no idea. Oh, that's a I weird. What you're talking? It's a weird urban legend you started, <laughs> but know, here I it thought, is. I thought he talked about let's just, it. I mean, yes. I, sure. <laughs> yes. Let's know. all say yes. I don't know. But that that doesn't that shouldn't <laughs> count because that act is you using uh, skill and patience, empathy, to, and empathy uh, and teeth above all else. Empathy. Lots of teeth. Because you are physically and quite literally putting someone before yourself. And it's okay to enjoy it. You know, you can, but no, I mean, I think, I think people are able to enjoy things, but that's through empathy. Mm. Um, oh yes, I see. There's, I think there's people who are empathetic towards things like oral pleasure, and then there's the the total douchebags in the world like DJ Khaled, who's like, I would never, how, and it's like, what a, how, it's a give and get society. You don't, you don't expect someone to dig your well and then walk off and go, we're done here. Like, no, you do something nice for them. Oh man, if asshole. you're rich, if you're rich, you can get away with a lot. Uh, and those out there, because it's a wild, wide world and everybody's into their own thing, maybe he found a lady who's into that. I'm not going to say that. Maybe a lady not. who's not into getting her. Yeah. She just loves eating dick and is yeah. just fully okay with that. She's lying I, to herself. That's a unicorn. Maybe yeah. she's seen the billboards of his Vegas residency. Maybe she knows her place. 
Yeah, somebody Everything who's not that? in Vegas. I just want to, for the record, Elise said that, not, <laughs> and not a man. <laughs> I was joking. I know. But what a marvelous transition uh, to get a, to get an ad read done. Is uh, it? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you got mental issues, throw them in a box and ship them on away. And you can do that with ShipStation. Uh, so this is a, basically, it's like a, it can collect all of your shipping needs into one place, and that sounds dumb if you don't do a lot of shipping, but if you're selling stuff through multiple storefronts or even just trying to get rid of stuff in your own life, uh, collecting all that stuff through the right set of tools can be very helpful. Uh, so whether you're using Shopify, Squarespace, Etsy, BigCommerce, WooCommerce, or over 75 other popular selling channels, ShipStation brings all of your orders into one simple interface, makes it really easy to manage, see what you've shipped and what you haven't. In the past, I've just used a Google Doc, and it works, I guess, but it's not the best. Um, typically, I'll use this sort of thing for, I mean, it works specifically, sometimes I'm mailing stuff out to, uh, to fans or, or other, other people, but in my own personal life, I'll go through uh, just flurries of activity where I just get freaked out about how much stuff I have, and I'm like, ah, I'm getting rid of it all. Time to liquefy it, so I'll do an eBay fire sale. And throwing up 10 or 15 sales at once, and they all close at different times, going to different locations, different addresses. It can get very confusing to make sure that the right stuff gets to the right people with the right kind of shipping and all that stuff. So ShipStation is a great solution for that. It makes it really easy to track everything and just make sure you're not too bogged down in all the details or having to double and triple check everything. Uh, so if you do a lot of shipping, check them out, especially if that if from your work or anything like that. They even have cell phone uh, app access, so you can look it up really quickly. Uh, you can try it free for 30 days and get an additional month free on top of that. If you use our promo code DUDE, uh, so that's ShipStation.com, and then there's a little microphone in the upper, at the top of the page there. Click on that, type in DUDE, you get two free months of the service, and that's at ShipStation.com using our code DUDE. So if you do a lot of shipping, check it out. It was, it's super helpful for me, and I'm gearing up to do another fire sale because I just found out I have like three or four fight sticks, and only one of them actually work on my computer, so I gotta get those out of my house. Life comes at you fast. It comes at you real fast. It's rough. Three generations of gaming consoles, and then there's just sticks, just sticks sitting around. So, uh, what do you, you know, do with that? Also, we're coming up on Halloween, and I know Stephanie's gonna wanna buy a house's worth of decorations, so I gotta clear out some space. Hmm. So that's shipstation.com, <laughs> microphone on the July, top. July, coming it's up dude. on Halloween. <laughs> uh, shipstation.com, code right is around. dude for a free month of the service on top of the th free 30 days you already get. So thank you, ShipStation. And yes, you're right, uh, Halloween starts roughly after Valentine's Day. I saw her tweet about it. She's like, when is it okay? Yeah, but like it she was needs... one of those questions where it's like she didn't care what your exactly. answer was. Exactly. Yeah, she, she knows when she it would starts. Own... It was a test. July first. She knows who to surround herself with if they don't yeah. say the right thing. In her defense, Halloween is my favorite holiday as well. Mm -hmm. um, I just love summer too much uh -huh. that I can't get I mean, into it. But there's a is she Halloween addicted? Do you think? <gasps> You think yes, she's addicted I actually to Halloween? Do think she is. It, it changes her life. It legitimately gets in the way of a lot of very How important things. How many of those things, things does like it? Like me having a closet that's not filled with stuff. There you go. Very uh, important. Uh, oh, we bought a robot vacuum too. Mm -hmm. That oh. little fucker's hungry. Did you name him? What's his name? Daryl. Nice, good. Yeah, that's you good. gotta name your robot vacuums, yeah. guys. I haven't named mine yet. They're gonna oh, protect us when the other robots ultimately He's uprise. not gonna be around. Much no, it's gonna choke what? on a sock and die. What happened? Well, Bruce gave me it. It's like Gen 1 Roomba. Okay. And he was Bruce was like, this thing sucks, but the, the charge doesn't last very long on it, and it just goes in a room and it dies. I'm like, well, I can fix the battery, that's no problem. Yeah. You just get a replacement battery, it's mm -hmm. like 20 bucks. So I got it, but yes, it's it's not a fancy one, so it it just wants to go. It just goes, so like, I'll never complain about free technology, especially something that like cleans your floors, but like, I, I spend half the time trying to find what room it went into to go kill yeah, itself. Does it not it's shriek in pain when it dies? Yeah. Well, it goes, doo doo doo. Oh man, no. It's, or it, goes, it does like that death, death tone thing, but uh, it's it's all right. It's fine. It I would have never had it otherwise, and yeah. I actually don't think I will ever buy one. Um, I'm I'm still I guess a little old school. I, I like I like a, I like a owning your own vacuum and being in control of what you can suck. I think it depends on your situation because we have so much dog fur that we run that bad boy every day. Yeah. So Gregory is he's a member of the family. Mm. He but he is very his charge is great, but he is very intrepid. So he'll try it. He'll try certain terrain because he, he doesn't take no for an answer, mm -hmm. and then he gets himself into sti well, like sticky situations. He's also like, he's also like, hmm, I think I can get under that couch. I'm like, Greg, you Greg, can't. No, you can't, Greg. He's like, and then he'll home. get halfway under and go, I'm in, I told you I could get in, but then he can't get out. Yeah. He's, but so, yeah, he's, I admire his courage mm -hmm. and his bravery, but and at least he's right, he's going trip. Benson <laughs> did not like, when we got Greg, I had to tell him he was bad in front mm -hmm. of Benson, mm -hmm. oh. so that way Benson 
but then later I had to tell Greg it was gotcha. just a thing that we do for Benson. <laughs> so Greg didn't get upset. Oh, that's, yeah. That's, uh, that's hard to manage. Well, we have these chairs, and they just they just have like little, there's just like little metal legs, mm -hmm. and it'll go up and it'll just get stuck. Oh and yeah. And then it dies and it kills itself, and then oh. it forgets what time it is. Oh. So then I'll recharge it, and then 3 a.m. will come around because it thinks it's uh, 3 in the afternoon whenever I set it to clean. It's like, time to clean! And I'm just like, <laughs> it's so loud. <laughs> I just hear, zzz, and it gets stuck on the chair. Amber, it's sleeping. <laughs> Amber, it's clean in the morning. <laughs> so it sounds like, I don't know. I'm, yeah. I'm just like, He's my little boy and I love him. He's yeah. special, but it's just like you didn't even name him. I haven't. I I don't. Is there a point? Their naming pillows it? must be so hot. I'll <laughs> turn him over. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, and also the little the little little spinner that was like that stopped moving. So oh. it's like like I said, I love him like he's one of my own. Um, but what's the point in naming if you don't plan on keeping it? Mm. Oof. Yeah. yeah, you don't want to. I think I think I'm just gonna take it to like. The cliffs of Malibu. Yeah. And go, <laughs> one last free. plane, buddy. You're free. <laughs> yes. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to clean the ocean. <laughs> God's people guy. <laughs> anyway. Daryl just, he, he wedges himself as far back under a bed as he can possibly get, and then he starts shrieking because his battery is low, mm -hmm. which could, is really fun to wake up to. Did yours come with the things where you could tell it not to go? The invisible barrier? Oh, yeah. No. Oh, ours I think came it's, with an invisible wall that you can like set up. Uh, so we've never used it, though. We never, I mean, because our apartment is like 300 Three cubic feet. meters, yeah. <laughs> My, uh, the, I think this one's supposed to learn your house, and then if it like dies somewhere, it's not supposed to go there ever again, but... Yeah. It, it seems to want to, so whatever. I've given up. You know, it takes time the, to learn. They're in the terrible twos. You gotta let them explore and get hurt, whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, typically, I'll flip it over and then yank out all the socks and like <sighs> swatches of thread that Stephanie left on the ground and a lot of hair. A lot of hair. A lot of hair. Cat hair. Uh, female hair. None of my hair though. My hair stays. Female hair. It all stays on female. Hair. <laughs> I don't know. It's. I, I often wonder if a vacuum's this hard. I mean, we have we have two cats. Oh, I know. They're I know. pretty okay. easy. And I'm like. You want to make a child? <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I don't know. Like the vacuum's already enough work for me. Well, the I, vacuum offsets the child a little bit because you just put the child on the vacuum. Then anything the child ruins is immediately cleaned by the vacuum. The vacuum's <laughs> helping your child. And I, I thought it. I thought the cats are gonna ride the vacuum. They can't stay on that thing. Psh, yeah. That was your ticket to three hundred thousand Instagram followers. If only. Damn it. Nope. Never gonna happen. You should return that Roomba to Bruce. Maybe make, <laughs> he won't take it. Make no, an Instagram really story not. out of that. It won't work. Uh, yeah, mental illness. <laughs> What's the difference? Skirt around. <laughs> so, um, I think I think we could do our audience a, a service here by being a little honest with them and with us, because mm -hmm. we're all addicted to something, especially me. So I think it's time for us all to individually come clean about the things we are addicted to. Uh, I am addicted to. Um, this is something that I can do in public, and I do it at least twenty hours a week. But uh, I'm trying to think of how to describe this. It's actually very deeply personal for me. So. You know how, imagine a straw, right? You can suck some liquid up into the straw, but it doesn't come out the end of the straw yet. And then let's say uh, you pinch it off at the bottom of the straw. Okay. Then there's just liquid in that straw, but it's not really coming out, it's just holding in there. I do that with my urine all the time. I'll just let a little, like a little drip through and then <clears throat> just hold Why? it. I have to, it, keeps, it gives me confidence on a daily basis. If you ever see me down, it's probably because how my- How long do you hold it? I want to say three to four hours until the burning really it's gonna sets in. It's going to give you problems later. Yeah, that's going to be bad for you. I think so, you got Is that what that is? Oh, look, another donation. <laughs> well, hey, if uh, if gonorrhea is a, is gonorrhea disease? Yes. Yeah. Okay, well, I'll just go get pills for the gonorrhea and keep holding it in my piss. Gonorrhea right. addiction, then you have that, and then you're addicted to that. I'll just deal with the symptom, and then I get to keep my life lifestyle exactly where it is. So I'm sorry. It, so that's what you're addicted to. It hurt, it hurt me, yeah. Pissing and then holding some piss in Just your... a little in my dick, yeah, just a little bit. I'm addicted to burgers! <laughs> it's true. Actually, yeah, I mean, I could probably eat a burger every single day of my life. Are you... Is that an addiction, though? I don't know if you're addicted to them. Red meat is a carcinogen, right? Are you worried about the long-term... It absolutely is. Yeah. Are you worried about the long-term effects? carcinogens in it. Um, I mean, yeah, yeah, I guess red meat, red meat is not great, you know, in terms of, like, hypertension and <laughs> your general health. Yeah. Uh, it's also bad for the environment, you know, just meat in general. I'm sorry, uh, there. Whew, yeah. You didn't make it. I I also would say um, I love to like make shopping lists and add a ton of things to them and then never, like some, some things I buy, but then most of them are just like graveyards worth of lists of things that I have thought I would want. Um, 
Like, Are these addictions? But you didn't yeah, yeah I, spent a lot of, I spent a lot of time doing it. Shopping, I think, would be like the overall thing, right? But pretend shopping? I suppose, but I just make the lists. Mm -hmm. I spend a lot of time. Do you like thinking about how your life would change with all of these items and then you don't buy them? Yeah. Okay. And I have like, I make the lists specific to the type of items that are on them. So like a, a list of books, oh. a list of shoes, a list of household items. So this isn't you like making a shopping list for if you were a Venetian like painter. No, this is just, okay. It was like Amazon lists, basically. Mm -hmm. I spent a lot of time researching, adding to the lists. Hey, sure Rarely making the purchases. That's sad. You should be a Twitch streamer, and then you're just, you're like, mm -hmm. yeah, I should, Monday, I should, Monday is shoes list day. I should, that's a great idea, doing a stream where you like, just, just shop and like, but then people go start buying and that build stuff your list. You. Well, not if they- Would that be good or bad? Not if they can't see where, like, you know, where to send it, obviously, and mm. they, maybe they would just, it would be like the shopping channel where they would see things that they also would like. And they would buy them for themselves. So like so I'm, yeah. you know, you're, you're curating for them. As your therapist, I'm going to say you don't have a problem. <laughs> I like that. Did you would see you like you turn burgers? Thing into a good thing? Yeah. yeah. It's like, I'm helping people. Who's I'm this? just trying to add, uh, uh, I genuinely, I, or, or <laughs> to be a little bit more frank here, I'm just trying to add to the discussion here. No, something. I appreciate it. Mm. You're addicted uh -huh. to Marvel Puzzle Quest. Uh, am I addicted? I don't know. I don't think I. I don't think it affects my life in any way. I think it's and it honestly, I don't spend that much time doing it. I check in and I do it because I enjoy it. Um, I would say I'm more likely addicted to exercise. Oh, sure. I think that's more likely. It's not necessarily detrimental, but when I'm not doing it, I am irritable, and I feel as though I get depressed, and I feel as though I am not progressing in any facet of my life. So like. Hmm. If I was like, oh, it, like things are going really good at work, but I hadn't gone to the gym in like three weeks, I would probably be miserable. So like the offsetting of how much that satisfies my my drive for progress or whatever, it's way more than other things and stuff. So I, ha I have seen you hmm. forego like personal encounters mm -hmm. in order to go to the gym. Yeah. Almost every single like day. Like if someone's visiting from out of town, yeah. it's usually 50-50 whether James will be like joining us for lunch because yeah. like, I'll see them later, but yeah, yeah. the gym is now. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I know that I'll feel worse than if I had hung out with them. I can respect that. That's yes, fine. thank you for the yeah. respect. Yeah, or it's like maybe like it's Saturday morning or whatever, and it would be nice if we went like and did something, but it's gonna be fart like, noise. I'm so it was like late in bed, had a burger, <laughs> did some Amazon shopping. Yeah. So this yeah. is this is going to be tough to a tough question to answer, but is it? Because the physiology of exercise is important. It actually mm -hmm. does release physical things in, in your brain and in your body. And then there's the mental aspect as well. Mm -hmm. Does your ir irritability from not working out, what would you say is the split between mental and physical? I have no idea. I'd have to get a doctor yeah. to figure that out. But I just know that I don't feel the same when I'm not doing it. And it probably has something to do with a lack of endorphin release. Um, so, you know, but. I, I think I just feel, I don't feel good either. I know that there's a mental aspect of I don't feel like I'm making progress or I am losing ground in some sort of race against life. Yeah. Um, Sometimes if he's in a bad mood or something, I'll be like, go to the gym. Because it, it, like, well, he hasn't yeah, yeah. gone in a while yeah. and that's clearly why. Yeah, but I always feel better. I always, I always fucking feel better. It is the ultimate meditation for me. Hmm. It's better than any, like, like if I, sometimes I'll have headaches, like genuine illness headaches or whatever, and I'll take an ibuprofen and I, I'll be like, I still feel like shit. Or I'll go to the gym at like 10 o'clock at night and then come back and sleep like a baby with no pain whatsoever. <laughs> so. Raising my heart rate, whenever I have a headache, raising my heart rate is the worst. It, it, it every, it. everything goes yeah. away. Huh. All the pain completely goes Mine, away with like, like symptomatic, symptomatic pain. Mine's similar stuff. with, I definitely have a caffeine addiction, like oh. to coffee. Like if I don't drink coffee, on, like on Saturdays, I don't have a coffee machine at home. So I'll feel like shit until I go to Starbucks or get something in me. And then I'm like, I'm better now. Like mm -hmm. I will be in a genuine bad mood. Actually, oh, this quick shout out to Benny. Uh, he was a guy I met at Starbucks. It was like, like in my neighborhood. I went there to go pick something up for myself and Jess. And I had woken up. This, mind you, this is like 10 a.m. Hadn't had coffee yet. And the guy was like, um, like, hey, oh, Adam, cool. I didn't know you come here. I'm like, blah, blah. And then I was like, in my mind, I'm like, I think I was just a total dickhead to that guy. And I was like, because I was, I had that feeling of, 
I have no caffeine in my body right now and I don't know how to socialize. Like, there's also that thing in that weekend when you sleep in and you're like, you're just super groggy and yeah. you're like, everything's weird and off and your hair's old and funky places and you're not sure how you even like drove to the place you're at. So, uh, Benny, if you're listening, I'm sorry, man. Aw, he's Start. not. He's not. He's like, he's like, I hate this. I hate fun house. Yeah, he buried it. <laughs> I'll never listen to Dude Soup again. Any other addictions? Uh, <laughs> uh, I would say like. Te- technology advancement. T- yes. Oh, I would say I, that. You're a technophile. I, uh, Omar and I bond over this a lot because it's like he and I are always like, like he and I bought a keyboard together. Um, because we're always like... He's left hand, Omar's right hand. No. Well, no, we, we bought the same one off of... Oh. The, there's this website that's awesome and it sucks. I'm not going to say its name because they don't deserve any sort of shout out. Because <laughs> they, they do these things where... I've talked about them before, but like they'll do a group buy. It's like kind of like a Groupon sort of thing or one of those like Woot mm-hmm. sort of things where like, if we get enough people to buy this, it'll go on sale. And we're like, Omar and I have been looking at like... We always talk, we're like, oh, these keyboards are awesome. These like mini keyboards. We both bought one, and it's like doesn't ship till August. It's like go fuck yourself, man. Oh, like okay. this is why Amazon's kicking the shit out of you. I'm sorry. Like sure. I won't shed a tear when you go out of business because of all your dumb business practices. I love your that your heart's in the right place, but god fucking damn it. And it, I realize that this is making me a more cynical and angry person. Where I'm like, I want new technology, and I want it today. Yeah. Like even just today at lunch, uh, Omar and I were talking about um, something. I talked to you about Lawrence, where it's like I'm trying to wire my house because I'm like, I'm like I don't my, my TV. Fuck, this sounds so stupid. My TV is has Wi-Fi in it. It's wireless, and it gets everything beamed to it. But, like, but what if I wanted to rip a Blu-ray and stream it from my PC? Wi-Fi can't handle that. Wi-Fi can't do it. But the with. fiber can. I know this because I did test a cable, but it went through the living room. I don't like that. So maybe uh, I need to hire someone to come in and run Ethernet through the house. So then it's like, and then like, well, maybe we can put an Ethernet port in every room. Yeah. But then Omar's like, oh, have you heard of this mesh network thing? It's pretty awesome. It's kind of pricey, but you might want to look into it. Wait, what is this? No, I'm no, I'm curious. I'm not going to tell. Is you. this over power? Uh, no, that's that's like a home plug. But yeah, this is more of like a, a Wi-Fi. Spend the but money. But it's like its own sort of Wi-Fi network. Spend the money. It's <laughs> worth it. Like, is that like the Google Wi-Fi? Investment. Yeah. Similar to that, but it was like a different brand. But apparently, it's like the best oh. thing in the world. But it, that's how fucking stupid it is. I bought a five gigahertz. Uh, router over the 2.4 gigahertz one because I'm like, the speed's gonna be a little higher. <laughs> I get like, I get the faster internet speed. I get like, I didn't need a Pixel two. I Pixel one was fine, but I'm like, well, that trade-in value is pretty enticing. And uh, this big phone's a little too big. I want a smaller one. 128 gigs of space. Wow. <sighs> like, I don't need any of this. And I'm I am absolutely addicted to having like the latest greatest thing. And it's it's stupid. There's well, there's got to be a name for that because correct me if I'm wrong. Is technophile? Sort of. I I think it's a different. So the behavior pattern that I'm and and Adam, correct me if I'm wrong here, but so when your TV was on Wi-Fi, you could already watch movies. They were like 1080p. They weren't 4K (laughs) though. No. So like there is a thing where you're having an experience. But while you're having it, all you are doing is fixating on the other ways it could be slightly better. Yeah. And that's what leads to buying a new Wi-Fi network, to uh, overspending on like video cards, to like having a vacation and being like distracted all the time about how like this thing's wrong or that thing's wrong. I feel like there's a behavior pattern that's pretty universal in humans. That's kind of what gets people to get so upset about DLC when a game comes out too. It's like you're buying it, but well, I don't have I don't have the like America flag skin. Therefore, I'm not getting the right or the full experience. Hmm. And that's what leads you to spend 20 minutes looking into mods or like turning off mouse acceleration and all this stuff. Just so you have it perfect right. so you can play for while, five minutes while, and get Yeah, bored. while foregoing the actual experience that's there. We, I mean, yeah, so when you get your network set up, you're going to watch a movie in 4K, except you're going to be on your phone half the time, we, probably. We dealt with this with demo discs, uh, upcoming spoiler, I guess. But <laughs> a fan sent us a computer, and we spent so much time trying to just get that thing to work. When, when in reality, like... And like I, I've done enough pattern recognition where I know, I knew where this was going, but and I also knew that the ultimate goal wouldn't bring me happiness. <laughs> <laughs> but you still did it, right? Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, believe me, a bigger <laughs> TV on the wall with the mesh network is going to make me really happy for about five seconds until. Well, it's accomplishing something. I, I'd yeah. be curious to know what the term for like an early adopter or somebody that is, is addict. addicted to acquiring, because te- digital addict, as Wikipedia tells me, refers to someone who compulsively uses digital technology, hmm. which would manifest as another form of addiction if that Literally technology everyone. was not as easily yeah. accessible Real to them. I, it, do- it doesn't exactly seem to encompass which. What your thing is, which is where like you almost have this like restless leg syndrome when it comes to technology, where you're like, I need this new thing, or you easily I, I want something new. I want everything to be. This is this is my my ultimate detriment. I want everything to be so simple to use that you complicate it. Maybe. That I make it so overcomplicated that no one else can use it. <laughs> 
So like we do, we you guys gave us that Alexa last year after you did VidCon. They gave you the the thing. So I was like, I was like I'll give this a try. You know, thirty smart plugs later and a bunch of smart bulbs and everything. I'm like, oh, it's fantastic. And so when people come over, like, how do I uh, how do I turn on the living room light? I'm like, oh, you just tell Alexa. And I'm like, oh, why? It's a lighting program A42. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of course, it's called A42 because that's the name I chose. You know, yeah. like, yeah. It's so I realized that the things that are convenient for me are making it ultimately inconvenient for anyone else around me. Back to the discussion about video game addiction, though. Would you say mm -hmm. that the reason you feel that way is less about your love for technology and more about your fear that you don't? You, you aren't keeping up with the Joneses the same way the way you were w growing up. You, you had to huh. share everything and you never had the newest of anything. Half the time you're eating food off other people's plates. Still right, is. Right? Still, I'm Still <laughs> are. Um, I so don't know. Would you say that this is, this is your compensation for a childhood of never having? anything Possibly. remotely close to the best. I Maybe, but that also might just align with that thing that happens to you when you're an adult and you have disposable income mm -hmm. when all of a sudden you can buy your own console. I remember that the first time where I was like, oh, I can actually buy an Xbox. God, I what a rush. Do this. Yeah. Like, what I a don't fucking need, rush. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it, it's like, but it's, yeah, maybe, kind of. Like, I, I think I felt peer pressure to buy the Switch because you guys were all buying it. Uh, and I, I really wanted to play Zelda. Making but like, fun I, of this guy. Well, no, but I, your Switch. but I don't. I don't ever use it. But I know Elise uses her. All. You were using it this weekend. Hell yeah! Like during. And I was at a party um, like a couple months ago where we just all like coerced someone into buying a Switch. Like we had her bring up her Amazon and then like or we all cheered <laughs> when she did. <laughs> There's something weird about that too when you get someone to. Join in with you yeah. on a thing where, like, it's like at, well, like at this office, we most of us use a Pixel. I don't like almost no one has an iPhone, and when someone else gets a Pixel, we're like, yeah, good, job. and it's like it serves no purpose to me. It means nothing other yeah. than like, um, I guess if I ever text that person, I won't get something stupid where it says they liked my text. Have you seen that yet? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With iPhones, uh, yeah, yeah. Was, we were on a, a group conversation with like Jess, myself. receipts or it's iMessage. There's you emoji know, reactions. I, they so. have. It's not, it's not you. Just you. Just like as though someone sent you a status update in a text message on an iPhone. I believe you can just hit like, and then it'll just go bink, and then in the message you'll just see oh. like if you're, if you're on iMessage, yeah. message, they're treating it like social media. Well, it's yeah. a it's a positive way of leaving a message on scene, right? Well, it's more it seems like, rude if it's like saw that four hours ago. Like, I got it, got it, yeah, I agree, the, but I'm not gonna yeah. type it out. The okay. problem is if you're not on an iPhone using iMessage, what it says is you get a full text message that says this person, first name, last name, liked this message, and then like a repeat of your message and or whatever. Oh being on God. Android, when I first got one of those, I thought that person like typed that out, like they were being weird in some yeah. way, and that was how they responded yeah. to people, because it was someone I didn't really know that well. And I was like, oh, that's unusual. Yeah. And then I later realized like, oh no, this is a mm -hmm. iPhone I, thing. I kind of get that, uh, on one hand I can see it, because it sort of circumnavigates around our inability to show emotion through text, where yeah. often you have to write sarcasm, and so emojis and, the, and bitmojis and now animojis and all these can express things over a digital network that you could not, you, you could only do person to person. So I totally understand that that's there, but what I don't like, and this is sort of wrapping the conversation around itself, I don't like the addictive um, nature of social media and how it's starting to filter its way into other things. I really don't mm. like the the instant gratification of I'm going to yell a thing and if 52 people retweet it, that means they agreed with me and now I feel like I'm right. It's like, yeah. and then if someone says something that is contrary to what I said, I will then block them from my life. You're like that is not how you solve life's problems. It's uh, a I just think it's a new version of what human. It's an it's institutionalization. Always, it's always the same. Behavior. It's a, like. No. We haven't changed all that much. And oh, it's no, a, sure. like, so you just be like, you go to a church. They're not invited back to my party. Lutheranism. Yeah. Goes, I don't like when they do this. I'm going to pin some notes on their door mm -hmm. and tell them why they're wrong. Right. And then, and then, like, then leave and mm -hmm. start my own thing and get other people that totally agree with me. Like, yeah. You know, what do you mean? Whatever, I can't what do you whatever, mean I can't divorce my wife? I'll just chop her head off. Or what? Yeah. What do you mean I can't divorce my wife? I'll just build my own religion. And then where I said that I can, like, so like human beings kind of do that already in any, every form. This is just the newest form. It's very fast and very efficient. It's very effective. And public. And public, it yeah. has, and, and Adam, to your point, it's mathematical. Like, the, there's a human story to Lutheranism. Yeah, yeah. And it's somewhat analog. It involves interactions. And this stuff can all happen silently, 
cold, like computer algorithms can sort it to the top of your feed so you have to see it and all this stuff. It gets weird. I, I, kind of on that note, like, we kind of started the conversation about this, like I, social media is becoming such a thing that I'm like on the verge of quitting it. Oh. Like I, I, I've just, it's weird. If something becomes too much a part of my life, I tend to just walk away from it. Like, yeah, yeah. like if gaming is like eating up too much of my life, I'm like, I just need to take a break. If um, so you like, have these internal checks where you can feel like an alarm goes off when it's something that's starting to dominate your time. Yeah, or your and thoughts. it's definitely it's peaks and valleys of like I'll get like a sugar addiction where like I'll eat a lot of sugary things and then I'll just quit it hmm. and then it, it sort of goes away. Definitely have a food addiction. I'll eat a lot of food. I'll just keep eating and eating until I'm sick, and then I go whoa, put myself in check, and then I stop eating. So, or not not that I stop eating. Like I. I start to pace myself or like purge, you're good at Yeah, or I feel like I'm out of shape. So then I go to the gym a lot, but then I stop and then like go back and Yeah. Back there were about two uh, weeks in May where I just stopped going on Twitter and it was the best. It was honestly just for your mental health in terms of, of FOMO and not feeling like isolation. Cause I usually on social media mm. generally feel more disconnected than I do connected to people. And um so it's kind of like an out of sight, out of mind. It actually feels better to not go on. I also just find it can be exhausting. Like the, the people that are posting m several times a day, it's I, well, they're I can't they're even the imagine. I can't even imagine. Like, the followers, you're posting on share. Instagram, you're yeah. posting stories, you're posting on Twitter. No, and I'm like, it's like, because for me, it's there's a. A, an emotional roller coaster that, and, and it's gonna sound, that's a dramatic way of putting it, but like every time you make a post, you're putting yourself out there in some way. So like, even if you put it out there and you're like, I don't care, you're still getting f feedback from people. You're still gonna uh, have a reaction to it and that's still gonna, you know, feed into your psyche in some way. And I don't know, I, I think it's just kind of, uh, I, I guess I admire the people that just are super active and they love it. Like, it's great. I you think that's admirable? In that... Or are you I, just saying that so they don't get offended because maybe, someone you know is watching maybe, this? Maybe, like uh, uh, James's feet. That's admirable. Been very dedicated. Except that I, I, I don't Rarely, really but, post. Yeah, I and honestly, I follow, I think, eight people on Instagram because I go on Twitter so much. So when I, it was like, and it's more, for us, we're in an interesting situation, which is good. It's an enviable situation, but it's like career stuff. Like having social media is part of our career because sometimes there'll be a campaign and they'll want to know if the, if Funhouse can use our accounts or something like that for that campaign. So it's like, it does play into our, our lives financially and, and professionally. No, that's weird. But when like Instagram was kind of coming around, I was like, okay, well, I'll get this, but I don't want to use it, which is part of the reason for the feet. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't want to be thinking, what's the next thing I could put my feet on? So it's generally a situation where I look down and I'm like, <laughs> oh, or I'll have my phone doing something else and I go, oh, this is, this is good, and then I'll do it. Like, that's, it. but I never put any more thought into it than that. Mm. People that are like, we, we were at VidCon last week, and it's really interesting when you see people there whose professional lives completely revolve around this perception that they put out for their community. Mm -hmm. And just like in a lounge somewhere, like sitting, they have a photographer or yeah. they have their own thing and they're con they're messing with themselves constantly, constantly. Yeah, one shot, no. not good, no, the light's bad, yeah. Turn, maybe I'll do this, no. It, it makes you appreciate messing. the effort that goes into it. If nothing else, that's the most positive. It right. is It is good, except that the idea behind it is like, we're just like, yeah, pic just here's a, just a picture, mm -hmm. or whatever, like, but it's such, it's like a mini photo shoot, and it's such, a th I such always an ordeal. I love like the selfies you see of somebody where they have like a field of, of daisies behind them, and then you pull out, and it's them like at the side of a freeway. Yeah, and yeah. Just found, like, <laughs> yeah, a yeah. batch of grass that looked nice. People well, like what, spitting water. Well, what I, I can never stand is when someone's like, so humble to be right here. You know, it's so great to be. And it's someone, they're standing, I don't know, 20, 30 feet from the camera. They're standing next to the thing. I'm like, well, who's the ass? Like, who's the one who took the photo? Boyfriend. Mm -hmm. who's, who's like, who's the person that you're like, Man, so happy to be here. I'm so like things are so great. Happy to be like, hey, take a photo of me. Like I can't, yeah. I can't. Well, I have all these thoughts. Yeah, I can't tell yeah. people. I don't know. Like, so Rahul posted that really funny picture the other day where he was like asleep or whatever, and he's like, oh, Bay yeah. took this photo of me. We all know he's lonely <laughs> yeah, yeah, than yeah, ever. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, well, speaking of online, 
social, all that sort of thing, you can get that under control and your expenses with Mint Mobile, who's sponsoring this podcast. I recall there was a particular carrier that I hopped on board with about three months ago and you all laughed. You all laughed. And then you all caught up. Well, Mint Mobile's kind of doing the same thing. It's an unlocked network. So it's a, it's a secondary provider that is using an existing network. It's basically using T-Mobile. Uh, but if you have a phone that can accept a SIM card and can read GSM networks, you can use it. Uh, essentially, when you sign up for it, it's got data plans for every month, and it, it's on the T-Mobile network. So uh, hopefully it's available in your area. They Like, if you go on their website, you can punch in your zip code and see what the coverage is like. But every plan comes with unlimited talk and text, uh, so you can safely annoy your friends and loved ones. Uh, you can choose between two, five, and 10 gigabyte 4G LTE plans. Uh, they don't have unlimited, but the idea is that you shouldn't be paying for data you don't use, and if you have a pretty good idea of what your data is like every month. Or if you're, I mean, for me, it's like it's between home and work most days, and that's on Wi-Fi. So all my mobile data is for long trips, which uh, happen intermittently, but not too much. But the, boy, let me tell you, the pricing is, it got some blowout prices here. So for two gigs a month, that's $15 a month with unlimited talk and text. Five gigabytes is 20 and 10 gigabytes is $25 a month. Now those are uh, introductory prices and you have to sign up for a three month plan, but that's a lot cheaper than anything I pay now. Uh, so if you're not 100% satisfied, Mint Mobile has you covered with their seven day money back guarantee. Um, I'm currently on Google Fi and using a Pixel 2. So my phone actually has an internal SIM and then I have the SIM in it too. So I get to swap back and forth uh, just through the phone software, which is makes me feel like a uh, fucking modern James Bond. Um, <laughs> And I'm gonna try it out for a little bit, basically keep an eye on my data consumption and then see uh, see where it's at. I could probably save quite a bit of money by, by, by uh, switching over. So we'll see, I'm gonna give it a, a week or two and see how it all shakes out. But you can say goodbye to big wireless and unlock your new wireless plan starting at just $15 a month. Go to mintmobile.com slash dude. They say cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash dude. I've been waiting for a service like this for a while, and I'm, I'm really glad that this, these are starting to pop up. Uh, so once more, that's mintmobile.com slash dude for, uh, for your promotional pricing. So thank you, Mint, for the sponsorship. I'm excited to try this out. Uh, it's actually pretty cool when you swap over, like you get a voicemail right away that has set up instructions and all that stuff right there. So it's a pretty cool welcome package. Cool. Um, yeah, we'll see. It's mostly just for music, whenever I'm like away from a, a Wi-Fi network. All right, uh, let's see here. What are, so at least you mentioned like hate playing games or games that you feel obligated to keep playing. I get there, it's always like reward or unlock basis. So I'll only play a game or only, I'll only play things I don't like if I think that something cool is waiting for me down the line. I do that a lot with MMOs. Because um, to a point it's always like, you have to be a certain level or hit a certain gear score to unlock this new dungeon. And I really want to see that dungeon so I'll end up just playing the same thing over and over again to try to see that thing. It happened with Destiny a lot too. Mm -hmm. It's like, I really want to do this raid, but I need a certain light level. And that would be the kind of hate playing of like, well, I got to do my chores, which is a really dumb way to go about engaging in play. Well, that was like, I need to do this thing so I can get a better gun so then I can be good at Crucible so I can get another good gun. And then, wait, what yeah. do I do? <laughs> it's, it's all just yeah. weird. Yeah, because games like that are very good at presenting you with short and long-term goals because I mean, that's the entire game. It's, mm. it's giving you, it's putting a carrot way down and a treadmill to run on to get there. But yeah, once you think beyond that, then then you tumble down the rabbit hole of like, oh my God, why am I even playing video games? Oh. There is a video that perfectly illustrates the feel, this feeling. We've talked about it before, but it's the really buff guy at the pool. Have you seen it? He's like, this guy like totally... Well, is it James? <laughs> no, no, no. Like he, oh. He's like roided out, like gross big. But for some reason, his friend's filming him and the guy's gross. walking around the pool like, Oh. And he's like kind of walking up to people and they're just like, fuck off, dude, like, don't care. But he's just like, someone please compliment me on this body that I made for myself, please, please. And everyone's just like, I don't, I don't really care. And so that, that's sort of like how I feel like online gaming is like, look at this armor oh. I got and some, someone might go, ooh. And they leave. They like, or you can brag to your buddies, like, I got this Buddies? <laughs> <laughs> we don't have those. We traded those away long yeah. ago. My, I, I go on a forum and I take a photo of it and I'm like, check it out, look at me. Nah, when we were all playing Destiny, everybody was talking about the shit that they I, got. And I feel like a lot of it is that kind of what that is, is people, people want to be asked how they accomplished this task to get this thing that they did get. Mm -hmm. But the response I've always seen is when someone's like, like oh, how did you get that? How did you get that helmet? And they're like, oh, all I had to do. And then they're like, never mind. Like, never mind. 
Like, I don't care. I, if you had said it was 99 cents on sale, then you'd have my interest. But as soon as you start to describe all of the path, the hours and time you put into it to accomplish, I don't care. Never mind. All right, I'll stick with mine. Yeah. It's fine. I don't even look like a samurai. <laughs> that is the aerobarose of human emotion, right? Though you, you want to do something that makes people like celebrate you or be proud of you. Mm -hmm. But then once you get there, and oddly, this is why I find games done quick so endearing, is that it is people who did that silently without the expectation of any kind of stage. Mm -hmm. And then the stage is given to them for a great cause. And to me, it's like, it's the ability for people to be celebrated and applauded for doing a thing that no one asked them to do. It probably doesn't have a whole lot of merit apart from just the raw accomplishment of it. Mm -hmm. But then, yeah, to to have that moment where somebody can say, hey, giant dude at the pool, what did you do? And he's like, well, I had to watch my protein and, and my, uh, you got to be really diligent on those macros and hit those lifts. And like, that dude probably would have really enjoyed a little acknowledgement, but when you try to find it, you don't get it. And the same thing happens in video games. Yeah. I got I, my golden helmet. I think maybe there's a lesson in that, that you shouldn't go through life mm. looking for acknowledgement. Just, I guess, be the best person you possibly can be. And if there's a compliment, good for you. If not, mm. Don't, don't, I guess don't live your life based on likes. That's tough to do, man. It really is. It's, I, I, I totally understand it. Without any sort of positive reinforcement, your life can be very Well, hard. that's where like finding self-worth and self-accomplishment can, it becomes more valuable than seeking the approval of others. The, the thing is, everything is so gray that like you have no idea. Cause like even, you know, I'll go to the gym, I'll come home and be like, oh, at least I deadlifted this amount for this many reps today. And you're like, okay. No, I'm proud of you. I just but in like, just a, in like a about condescending it, so. way. No, I'm genuinely, <laughs> genuinely proud of you. But it, it doesn't matter to you. It does matter to no, me. No, but it does. Your happiness matters to me. And however, I better off telling. I'm better off telling Lawrence. Well, because Lawrence will be like, "Fuck yeah!" And then Lawrence will go to the gym and yeah, then start kind of, like knocking out motivating. reps and stuff. Maybe right. Uh, but it's, you're asking a lot of Lawrence for it too. <laughs> no, but I think inspire it's, people. It's a thing where it's like I do it for me. Sure, I completely do yeah. it for me. But I'll still feel inclined, despite having done it for myself and not needing any external motivation to ever do something like that, I'll still be, come home and be like, you know, I did this today. And it's just interesting because there's like, it, it's a self-worth. I have self-worth. Yeah. But sometimes you still, you just want a little well, of check Of course you're going to tell like, the person you love what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Florence. <laughs> Even if they don't want to <laughs> yeah. I appreciate but, it. Uh, I don't think I, it's wrong to look for amplifiers is, for your no, passion. No, I mean, I tell him the things that I do. Is there is there something James could do that would make you like gush and just be so proud? Read a book. Mm. It'd probably be like sweep. <laughs> 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 um, no, I mean, James does does lots of things. So I'm proud. Honestly, I'm super proud of him. I mean, I'm proud of all of you guys, but I'm super proud of him for the SGDQ donation. You. Well, you were more proud before you found out it was a donation. And you thought we were, we were going crazy. The, we were going on that cruise. We were going to get that cruise. Actually, if I can, can I take a moment, Lawrence? Please. Um, Goodbye. And I'm sure this is something that I, you all echo this sentiment, but while we're on the topic of it, we did a 24-hour live stream uh, earlier this week to help raise money for the SGDQ, Doctors Without Borders uh, race is happening right now. And Lawrence, James, Bruce, Adam, and Omar did the whole 24 hours. I didn't do the full 24 hours. You were there for like 21 hours. You, you took Six costume changes too. I, I, you had to go home to like take the, like take care of your cats and then you <laughs> left once and brought us back lunch. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm still though like, I, I felt bad because I'd slept like utter shit the night before. And so I came in tired and I was like, fuck, I don't know if I can power through this. And like, so yeah, I had to like, I fell asleep a couple times. Man. Well, there was one point where I was like, Ninja Gaiden. I'm going to run to the bathroom. And he went to the bathroom and then didn't come back for 50 minutes or something. I was falling asleep on the toilet. <laughs> and then I, I did that. I, I was doing the thing where I'm like, and then I woke up and I'm like, I got to go lay down. Like, this is, I can't. This is not how I die. This is not my. This will not be my tail. <laughs> <laughs> I only was there for like 12 hours and it felt like a really long time. But uh, I just wanted to say thank you for everybody. And, Slaughter I'm sure everyone pie. echoes this, but thank you so much to everyone in the community that made the donation because the, no the donation wasn't really from us. It was from everyone mm -hmm. yeah. that yeah. did that. You let us take community. it from you, which is actually very kind. Yeah. Yeah. And it, to me, like, um, it meant a lot because it, I felt like it was a very um, positive uh, in development in our community because, you know, you can see a lot of toxicity and uh, this, I felt like, overpowered a lot of that. I felt like during E3, we saw a lot of toxic behavior in the stream and stuff like that and this felt like a 180 from mm -hmm. that so like thank you guys 
for that. And James, I was really proud of you yeah. for the idea, and I was proud of it, all you guys for doing it. That That is actually one thing I'll say, ever since working with um, uh, Bruce and Lawrence and James, that was one thing like back, back at Machinima, um, what I really like about working with you guys is typically there's an idea, um, it's executed. <laughs> And so I know we you came up with that idea how what a year ago in like November yeah because originally it was going to be for awesome games done quick but then yeah. we started the year because what time when year what that's in January yeah January seventh yeah, we started it and then we were like nope we got to do a live show and yeah. so we just I just it. I had I had grown up and had been working with a lot of different people in different ways where there would always be a great idea and it was just never executed and it was always like when are we gonna do that like yeah, when do we have time waiting on someone else to sort of take the initiative yeah and I was just I was so happy that there was enough. There was enough engagement, enough excitement that the idea, like a year ago or whatever, was there, and then we still did it. And I was like, I was so happy when it was all done because it was like, we actually did it. Wow! And and I didn't think we were going to raise more than five thousand dollars. Exceeded our expectations. Yeah, in- wow. yeah, that was insanity. And I was like, um, honestly, you you and Bruce being there, uh, being like a rock. Um, saying like when I first walked in, you guys were like, we're here the whole time. That made it easier for me to be like. Then I will stay too. <laughs> Maybe like, easier right. for me to be like, I will come and go as I please. <laughs> um, but just, I think that sort of commitment, uh, I think it was inspiring. So I was like, so uh, thank you to James. And, and perspiring. Uh, and Bruce. Well, and, I knew the community. Omar and everyone else for fucking putting so much effort and work yeah. into that thing. Yeah, I guess. And Dan showed you, up for a bit. Rahul was there. Yeah. Joel, mm-hmm. even. Joel came Joel by. Joel was there. Mm-hmm. Everyone who worked, I guess, in front of him behind the scenes is like, Work their asses off, so mm-hmm. yeah. Omar's back there. Yeah, Omar. And Omar brought Bender, which made me really happy. Yeah, that dog Bender. keeps me awake. <laughs> yeah, but He's, the thing is, seeing Bender tired, that's like, oh god, what time is it? I, I, <laughs> got, I got some footage of him with his eyes rolling in the back of his yeah. head. He looks scary. Yeah, so he's a gorgeous yeah. dog, but when he falls asleep, but when like, you think about the dog that can't stop running up and down the yeah. hall. <laughs> Passed out like like you guys are insane for mm-hmm. doing this. Yeah, that Party. makes you start to question your motivation. It is really cute, and Bender and Benson were both like asleep on their beds in yeah. the back. They're so tired. They or when they were in the front, like oh, at a point, yeah, the dogs are taking couch. over the primary yeah. couch. Yeah, like, I like to sit. Nope, dogs there. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of what you do, right? You gotta let them lie. Yeah. I'll, I'll do that so many times where like our cats will go on our our lap, and then it's like, I need to get up, but nope, can't do it. Mm-hmm. They're they're flat, Adam, and you don't want to be a dick. Give you. You know, if you pull, if you suck liquid into a straw and you pinch it off, uh, the liquid stays in the straw. No, you don't want to do that. And then you don't have to get up. I, well, what if you have a foreskin? Oh, oh that's, that's even better. Even better. It's, like, into a knot. it's like a balloon, yeah. You know, like those garbage bags that have a little flaps at the top? Mm-hmm. Just tie it off. Never, then you got yourself a built-in garbage condom. Bag that's right. Dick. Never have to pee again. Speaking of never having to pee, oh, no, that doesn't make sense. Um, speaking of the next time we do a stream, maybe, whatever. Uh, the spot, podcast is sponsored by the Black Tux, which uh, allows you to rent tuxedos online for any occasion, um, especially play like situations in which it might be awesome to have a really fun or ornate tux, but you're only gonna probably wear it once. Like, uh, I don't know, like maybe a work event where you have to, or you wanna put on a cool red tuxedo. I'm gonna use this. Uh, <laughs> gonna, <laughs> Cut over to the two of you <laughs> sitting on your phones. I'm gonna use this as <laughs> long as uh, they're sponsoring us, or at least until the next time I have an occasion to uh, get a red velvet tuxedo. Uh, just digging around on the website, found some other cool tuxes in case you're into that stuff. Mm. <laughs> Welcome to the Emerald Shawl. Uh, Are you writing one for uh, for oh, Matt's is wedding? That a yeah, his brother. I mean, it may as well be in a tuxedo like that. <laughs> if you wanna, if you wanna look like a tu- uh, a Jonas brother or uh, an empty VLC player, I do. Uh, how long is that clip? Like three seconds. Uh, of the let me egg? see here. Well, let's see. What's the runtime there? Thirty-one seconds. Just enough time to. Uh, Open a pop-up. Uh, but yeah, you can you can go to Black Tux and find something that'll that'll really punch up uh, your event and delight your uh, patrons, viewers, what have you. I mean, stuff like give a pinch of class to your graduation celebration or birthday party or whatever. It's fun uh, and returns are super simple. It all comes all night and he's folded folded and like separated in a in a cardboard box. Take it out, try it on. If it doesn't work, you can exchange it before your event. Uh, and then when it's all done, you just fold it all up, put it right back in the box. There's like a cool tearaway label to reveal the return label underneath. You just tear it off, drop it off at a FedEx, and you're done. And that's actually a lot easier than owning a tuxedo and having it dry cleaned. Uh, roughly the same amount of effort, and it's much cheaper. And we're going to make it even cheaper for cheaper, cheaper for you 
you can get $20 off your rental by going to theblacktux.com slash soup. That's $20 off your entire purchase at theblacktux.com slash soup. Don't spill any on your tux because dude soup does not come out. Uh, so thank you, Black Tux, for the sponsorship. And uh, if you guys, if you guys uh, do anything fancy with your tuxes, I'd like to see it because every girl's crazy for a sharp dressed man. All right, uh, let's let's uh, let's get into hard netting, which I guess games done quick is pretty hard netting, but we're all familiar with it. It's now. the hardest of netting. Mm-hmm. Kind of is. They're God, their graphics package every year is better and better. It's frustrating. They got 60 FPS transitions, man. It's so good. Just, 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 just their design aesthetic, like. I don't even. It's for a charity, but like, I haven't seen like professional broadcasts that don't that do not look yeah. this good. Mm-hmm. It's got like chromatic aberration on a live feed. I'm like, how do they do yeah, that? There's two feeds of the yeah. It's clean that and, and then, then like a really cool background thing. Yep. I don't know how they just do it. just little effects. You like just these little like transitional, or just these little numbers in the, the bottom. Yeah. Like just little details. Like God damn, whoever I, I actually they've I think they use the same people, but the, the group who does those. Graphics, like, yeah. I hope they're being paid well. Also just, we had some graphics for ours that Adam made. Oh, yeah. That were good. Yeah, it was okay. Even <laughs> as we were installing it, we were like, nope, cut it, because we had, t- it was supposed to shift between oh. two different ones. They were going to have the name of the runner and everything. Oh, happened. man. The way, I, I know the way they're doing this is not just with OBS. They have some crazy, because I, I they actually have a step-by-step tutorial on how to God. install, like, their, mm-hmm. all their stuff. It's all web-based, and it's like, it's so impressive. But well, anyway. let's do hard net and yeah. right as they're about to start Sonic 3 and God, Knuckles. Sorry. This is a great time for it. It'll be there Go later. Go Jim. <sighs> oh, thank you. Every, uh, every time they do a Games Done Quick, I spend the next month watching all of the VODs that I didn't catch. So yeah. I'm not too too torn up about it. All right, Nikki Crush is our Nikki first Crush. competitor. Not a girl. Uh, not no a way. girl. No, oh, did but we, very shapely. Did we, I'm saying there's no way. Yeah, oh. hairy, look at the legs, hairy legs. Some hairy oh. legs, some very hairy legs here. Well, look at that. Forward a little bit. I knew it. That's yeah. a man. This is who you've been jerking off to. Look at the dislikes. Yeah. What? Because their, their dream was crushed. They, they thought like, it was a woman. Definitely prefer it was a woman. It doesn't matter. No. Uh, so at least I her feet. You didn't see this last week, I don't think, but uh, this is Nikki Crush, uh, a, crush variety of, a variety of oh, high crush. quality athletic shoes. Crushing all sorts of household crush, items. Show us the crush. Yeah, they're gonna get to the crush here. There's a lot of there's some teasing crushing. There's a lot going of preamble there. I, I mean that's already taking points off for me to be honest. You don't you don't like the teasing? No, I want the crush. You want a full on crush, huh? All right, well, let me. There we luckily go. we got we got thumbnails, so. Oh, there it goes. oh, oh, oh! It's a very strong apple there. Oh, I'm spinning around a little. Might bit. not be able to squish. How do they do that? They have handrails. I don't know. I was. It's a great balance. Looks like they're in a bathroom. Oh, there it goes. Oh. Oh, there you go. Yeah. That's the money shot right there. Put that in a pie. Smoke it. <laughs> See if the comments are, are talking about how it's dude. Yeah. I'm, actually, I'm just uh, curious how upset people are. A lot of a lot of recommended videos. Oh Most God. of them in Turkish. <laughs> okay. You, you can add a comment. And not Can't loading them. Oh, all right. Interesting. Maybe turned out maybe just the comments. Yeah, because they were all talking about YouTube's been legs. really YouTube's been really off today. Yeah. I tried really hard to watch that new Predator trailer, and boy, would it not load. So and then I watched a, it and was disappointed. A cherry cake here, fried chicken. Uh, oh, there's a lot of fruit. Uh, there are some, oh, versus ping pong game, which looks to be some variant of a uh, crossfire, Gun, if you yeah. will. Uh, my new Nike Free pl- 5, 510 Plus versus Toy House. Oh, it's more so crushing. it's also a shoe guy, huh? Yeah. yeah. Well, I said you'd like it because of Nike Freeze. I love Nike Freeze. From the mighty free, even the camera tilts Wait, how's times that a too. To- oh, oh, multiple Toy Houses. No, I don't right. like this That's one. That's just a, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a cool house. Imagine this, living there. Oh. <laughs> there's giant shoes outside. Where should I, where should I park? Just follow the ramp to the roof. This is, yeah, this is a real double decker <laughs> of, a, of a video here. Show us the next. Oh, this oh, is at least not into it. No, I just have a bad headache. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, all right, the next one is again. pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the Korean, Korean channel, it looks like. Oh, where oh. I like it. Dude's doing uh, covers on mini drums. Oh. What I find very odd is two very huge blow up videos and then a follow up that didn't nearly hit. And I don't understand why. Chop suey? Oh, you want to see Chop Suey? All right. No, whatever. Whatever is fine. Chop Suey has a pretty long wind up. <laughs> <laughs> this is like what John was going to do. Remember, he brought in those mini drums oh, and never yeah. touched them? It's on point. Now, is the song coming out of his iPod, the version without drums? 
I mean, yeah, well, I mean it's hard it's, to tell yeah. since it's so synchronized. That's impressive. Yeah. No, no bass though, huh? Yeah, no, no kick bass, which is kind of, kind of. I think, I think does count points off. Mm. I don't like that. Uh, but he needs yeah. a friend. Just a the system of a down cover here. Got some hot licks there. I don't know the song as much. Nobody does. Maybe that's why I didn't get as many views. Yeah. Yeah. I, I am impressed with his uh, collection of songs though, and how they were all on one of the CDs I burned in high school. <laughs> Oh, that little flourish there. Is this yeah. the one? Let's. I have decided. You, you can't see California without Marlon Brando's eye. I still don't know what that means. I didn't listen to nearly enough. When was the most recent uh, Nikki Crush? Oh, boy. Looks like it's been a while. Uh, a week ago. Oh, okay. Two crushers versus one car. And then the mini drums. Oh, new drum. title sequence here. Just the mini drums, just the three videos? Yeah, pretty much. Hmm. There's nothing else here. And also, I was like two years old, so. Uh, oh, a friend. Whoa, two crushers. Yeah. That's what that means. I thought it was referring to each foot. No. Wow, look at that. That's four crushers. This is getting real complicated. Imagine that text. Hey, you want to come over Saturday? Yeah. We'll crush yeah. What, what do you want to do? I noticed you had very feminine legs. Do you want to come crush some cars with oh, me? Oh, they passed it back and forth. These guys have already got a thing working out. And then you just see. Oh! Two it's like remote like control. This, two legs like that, and just you know. This, I mean, like this, like on two crushers is way better. Yeah. So apparently they're into the co-crushing. Uh, so yeah, we got uh, Nikki Crush versus uh, man playing mini drums hmm. to Slipknot and System of a Down. Damn. Whoops. Damn. All right. Well, it's only zoomed all over the place there. Uh, Come on, maybe. By the go. way, I want to point something out while we were talking about addiction and all these fun things. I'm pretty sure Lawrence is wearing Halloween socks right now. Am I? Mm -mm. I am. There's dancing skeletons on them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Stephanie bought those for me. <laughs> Did she buy them around Halloween time or like Christmas? No, it was no. It was like March. <laughs> Oof. I mean, it's Halloween somewhere. Do she also think, got me Frankenstein socks that I, I thought about wearing. When is Hotel time. Transylvania coming out? The new one. Soon. Yeah, oh, see? Let me check. You know, yeah. don't act like it. Oh, you hang on. Check your wallpaper. <laughs> hang on, let me They're just, going on a cruise. Uh, let me just check this picture of me in front of the poster for Hotel Transylvania Whoa. 3. Whoa, blah. I had food in my mouth, don't. It just says check out. I will. What? This movie, <laughs> consider. <laughs> There's I no will. date on there. You ruined it. Is this, Stephanie okay. did say that Hotel Transylvania 3 is her aesthetic. It is, yeah. I mean, a vampire with, with floral print. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Oh, so real quick, brief aside before we get to the vote. Is um is putting FYC as a shortening, is that a new thing for billboards? I, I feel like it must be, because maybe we just haven't been reading Variety magazine. Maybe. Maybe it's been a thing for a while, but I was like, what are you talking, what is FYC? For your took consideration. A, yeah. But I know what it is now, yeah. because everything was for a, Emmy show. Is that or just or for an LA thing? Like that's super an LA thing. I was so, gonna, I was gonna yeah, tell the audience. This is where all the voters are. Right, okay. right. So the the hope is that someone's driving down the road, they're like, oh, Brooklyn Nine Nine, and then they go, it's I just could, in their I head. I would consider that. So where yeah. else? Yeah. I mean, honestly, the people that vote on all of that bullshit don't watch everything that's nominated. Sure. So right. it's probably they, a pretty effective. They're just, gonna, they're just gonna vote on the thing they remember. So when yeah. they see the ballot, they go, uh, this exists. Well, I bet it's two things. I bet visually it's cleaner, just to, instead of all that text, it takes it covers less of your your visual, and I'm sure also it's just a cool thing. It's like, oh Say yeah, FYC. Maybe they're trying to get people to hashtag about it and tweet about it, but you can't hashtag for your consideration. It's too long. It's gonna yeah. bite into all that we stuff should, you wanted to say about should, Trump. We should do one for like a movie that we feel was slighted, mm -hmm. like a Neil Breen Spiel, film. Speed <laughs> Racer. Yeah, let's do let's do a speed racer for your consideration in win an Emmy for best documentary series. Although it does what? best documentary series. <laughs> <laughs> what do we we want to get a streamy? Maybe we can put up an FYC for that. Oh, yeah, I gotta fill up the paperwork for that. Uh, all right, let's vote. Elise, really, really do you want a Nikki Crush? Uh, or I'm gonna go Mini Nikki drum. Crush because right. I was thinking the mini drum, but their uh, videography is just too small and 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 it's been too long. And no, no kick drum. So I, I more, much more admire Nikki Crush's uh, dedication to it. All right, the craft. Adam, uh, mini drush. I want to go with the, the mini drums only because drums. I'm like becoming physically ill when I see those feet stepping on things now. I know, I know, 
Also, I really like uh, Slipknot's Eyeless. It's a great song. So he has great taste in music. I think uh, having a, a, a band with three percussionists is the only way to go, and then also a DJ, and I think there's a guy who plays the triangle. Uh, nine people should be in a band at all times. That's what I'm saying. Does someone play the mini triangle? Oh, well, that's, some, that's yeah. Everyone's like the S.A. Martinez of Slipknot. It's great. Mm -hmm. All right, so... James? Yes. You're the tiebreaker vote. I'm going to go Nikki. Nikki Crush confidently. Oh, damn it. Three, three videos does not a hard net make from two years ago, unfortunately. Fair I think enough. it's great. And if this, this person had done a more consistent uh, program of content, absolutely. Wow. But um, Chad is Chad is livid. I'm sorry. It's two years ago. That's not hard netting. Hard netting is a commitment to something that you believe in, and this person gave up after three. Two years ago. Maybe that's a you choose. They had or... one bad video that didn't didn't get a couple million views, and they said, "I'm not going to do this anymore." To me, that's the opposite of hard netting. Or they're so successful, they're doing something else. Like maybe they're on the road touring. Well, they can nominate that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm coming to your town. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for listening to this episode of Dude Soup. I think that'll call it for today. Just by the way, if you did miss our Funhouse Games Done Slow block, all of those videos are going to be going to roosterteeth.com. Jacob's working on it. Yeah, there's a lot. I mean, it's 24 hours of video yeah. there, so that's a lot. Uh, so if you missed any of that or there's specific runs you want to see, Adam killed it on Ninja Gaiden. Uh, I played it. Kid Cool? Cool Kid? What cool. was that? It's kid, kid, cool. kid Cool. I will say yeah. Kid Cool Legendary and, run and Bruce's Sonic. Uh, Sonic. Bruce's I, Sonic run was... We should probably get those up first because they're so damn good. Mm -hmm. I, I was laughing so fucking hard at those. Kid Cool I just wanted somebody else to experience because I was like, this is stupid. <laughs> oh, yeah. When we were doing There's... the voice of the guy, I'll help you! <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> My favorite part was all the tangerine stuff. There, well, I was going to say, there's oh. also the Gauntlet, the Gauntlet Legends. Oh yeah, that was that, tangerine. But that, I'm curious if it's actually funny. I don't know. Or if it was 4 a.m. The was... tangerine stuff? Yeah. I. I don't know. It was a lot know, of bad double Michael face. Michael Caine impressions and everyone just <laughs> when he talking was, about tangerines. When he was warning him about double face? <laughs> yeah. Uh. <laughs> double face is back, Master Wayne. <laughs> and he's got guns the size of tangerines. <laughs> You'll have to watch the tape. It's funny now. Yeah, yeah, watch yeah. the videos. That's coming to roosterteeth.com uh, under the full house. So roosterteeth.com slash series slash full house is mm -hmm. a fast way to fast. It'll be available for everyone. Yeah, yes. for the whole world. Uh, yeah. But yeah, so we're keeping that speed, garbage on YouTube. So waiting for speed demo archive to accept our videos. Uh -huh. We did it by the books. We had a judge there and everything. <laughs> some of them, some of ours were more legitimate than theirs. Far more legit. Like Bruce's official banjo tui. Oh, yeah. Uh, we already gave the money away, but we did get, <laughs> we did get feedback that That's Bruce true. Ha now has the world record time. For Banjo Tui, we had already given the money away. Oh, an ending you don't want to miss. Lawrence did win by default. I did. Remember? Multiple times. Yeah, because they gave up. Mm -hmm. Cheated. You beat Doom, yeah. Yeah. Can't believe that. Can't believe that. My game didn't crash at all. They stopped the timer several times. Just, mm. Bullshit, bullshit. Bad foul tactics. Play. Bullshit. Foul play. We wish them the best. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Do most foul. I just say we're, we, we are the, uh, the better man, just saying. <laughs> we knew we would be. We gave more money, we walked away. They didn't That's donate fine. to our stream. Uh, <laughs> sure. We'll point that out. <laughs> but yeah, if you're a first member, thank you for either watching live or just being a first member in general. Uh, for you guys, we got the post show coming up. Plenty of cool fan art this week, comments to address, live interactions to have. Grievances to air. <laughs> a lot of grievances to air, but uh, yeah. For everyone else, we'll be back next week. Thank you again for your time, and we look forward to talking with you again. Bye, everybody. Dun, 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 dun. And then they just go through this gang layer, demonstrating different weapons and stuff like that. Um, some of them were super, super cool. Uh, there's, uh, you can upgrade your eyes so you can tag enemies and see them through walls. And then there's rifles you can use to shoot through walls, basically. Nice. Uh, there's, this was super fucking cool. There's an upgrade you get where you can bounce like ricochet bullets off walls. 